Hey, David Perdue here. I just um, I wanted to give you a little lesson about beavers today and why I love beavers. Um, those little furry animals with the flat tails are incredibly industrious workers. I mean, they can take a, a field that's like this. This is on my land. They can take a field like this and turn it into something like this. Now you would think it would take an army of beavers to do this, but it doesn't. They're just persistent and they are focused and they work all the time. Um, so, you know, for seven years we've lived with these beavers. This little dam you're looking at right here started as basically just a little four foot dam. That's uh, it's now about 60 feet wide. <clears throat> so. Over time, they've built a heck of a lake here on this little stream that we have behind our house. This is one of six beaver dams that we have on this stream on our property. So that's pretty cool. My wife and I, on, um, in the spring, summer, and fall, we go out on beaver patrol and we will sit on the deck and watch them swim up the stream going to work at nighttime around dusk. And then we will watch them uh, come back at dawn the next morning because they're nocturnal animals and they will work all night long clearing out privet. This is privet. <clears throat> it's just a tangled mess. Privet is, is, is stuff that just grows everywhere and the beavers love the privet. So, you know, we love for them to clean this out. Uh, we've had this symbiotic relationship for seven years now and really enjoyed it. This year, things have changed a little bit. Their industriousness, their focus, their drive to um, work no matter what is causing some problems. They don't know when enough is enough and when to move to the next thing. So I'm going to show you an example now of what that problem um, turns into. So there's the dam that I was just showing you. Now if I turn and just walk up the hill a little bit you'll see that um, I'm walking up the trail toward our house. You might be able to see it up there in the, at the end of this little trail road. There it is. There's our house. And so you see we're really close to that little beaver pond, beaver dam kind of place. And we love it when the beavers help us keep the uh, property clean. But all of a sudden the beavers have started doing something we're not really excited about. Look at the size of this tree. See that? That's a sweet gum tree that is about Oh, I'd say it's a 12 inches in diameter. And it's maybe, oh goodness. Oh, it's got to be 60 feet tall, 70 feet tall. And it turns out the beavers like sweet gum. Well, we like our sweet gum trees too. Here's what happens when they start doing these big trees. And I'm going to tell you, this is going to relate to um, internet marketing in just a second, so stay with me. So, see that tree falling there? See that sweet gum tree over there with the gnawing on it? They're going after that one. They've knocked this one down. And you can see that they knock it down. Then they start chewing on the bark, because all they want is the bark. They don't eat wood. They eat the bark. So they take a tree, topple it like this. That's a beaver that's taking that tree down. And like this one.
and just chewed it until it fell over. Then they start working on the bark just like it's a corn cob. So what's the point of this other than I got a beaver problem, they got to figure out what to do. We don't kill beavers, so we'll end up trapping them so that we can continue to enjoy the fruits of their labor. And you can see the stream backs up all the way behind the house now. And we've got another dam over there where they have built right behind the house. And then another one further back. So we like the beavers. But my point is about all of this is that being so focused on doing rather than doing the right thing can cause you some serious problems. I get that way myself sometimes. I'm so focused on doing what I think is in front of me to do without having a plan, without being um, uh, f working in a direction that um, the doing that I'm continually active with is for naught. I mean, these beavers have knocked these trees down. And they're going to knock more trees down. They've decided trees are better than privet. Maybe I've got a shortage of privet. Maybe the privet wasn't right because it was so cold this winter. But these are trees that are coming down as fast as they can get to them. Uh, and they're very close to the house. So they're doing without any kind of... Uh, they're, they're, it's, it's almost compulsive doing is what it is. It's compulsive doing. They got to do this. They got to build a dam. They can't stand water that's running without having a dam in it. So they got to do that without knowing what the consequences are of what they're doing. In my business today, I want to make sure I understand the consequences of every action that I take. One of the great things I learned in the NAMS 5 webinar, webinars um, was from uh, Karen Thaxton. I love Karen Thaxton. She is really down to earth, very focused, and understands completely what she's doing. Um, Karen said that 80% of what she does is marketing. 20% is building content. Um, that's about the right mix. I probably am uh, a lot closer to 50 and 50. Um, marketing is what makes money. Uh, Scott Tusanot in the NAMS 5 webinars said that he has a daily plan for money-making task. He makes sure that he gets only, he does only his money-making task. He does those first. Everything else is gravy. So they are focused on doing stuff that gives them the right results. Beavers, on the other hand, the right results for them is to get this tree down and to have, eat the bark. That's all they care about. If you understand what I'm talking about with um, compulsive doing, and not doing the right plan, the right actions for your business, tell me about it. Put it in the comments below. Love to hear about it. Thanks.